Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So today I am continuing my Elliot era by talking to you about Daniel Deronda by Georgia Elliot. I just finished this about a week ago and my cup runneth over. I loved this so much. Um, so what is Daniel Deronda about? First of all, do not read the synopsis on the back of this book because it will spoil a huge plot line for you. But we follow uh, Gwendolyn Harleth and she is a very spoiled child. She has other siblings, but her mother has really raised her on a pedestal. And so uh, she's very much used to getting everything she wants. She's used to uh, having money and she likes to gamble. And she just desperately wants to uh, have that life, that rich, luxurious life with prestige, you know, actually without marriage. She said for uh, a lot of the beginning of this book, like, no, I will not find a man that I will want to marry. But we open and she is gambling and she keeps losing her money. And so she sells this necklace to get more money um, and it mysteriously uh, turns back up and she suspects one man of buying it back for her. Uh, we also follow Daniel Deronda. He doesn't know his parentage. He was raised by a benefactor who's become like a father figure to him. Um, and he's just kind of learning his place in the world and it's come to the point where he really needs to decide on what he wants to do with the rest of his life. And so these characters actually end up meeting each other and their lives intertwine in different ways. So Gwendolyn, her family falls on hard times, they lose their money, and eventually the uncle that helps them also falls on hard times. And so because Gwendolyn is so hungry for uh, being rich and money and the lifestyle that she's used to, she marries uh, Henley Grandcourt. And this happens earlier in the book. Their marriage may not be all it's cracked up to be. And then again, we follow Daniel, his relationship with the people around him. And he uh, one day is uh, boating down the river and he sees this woman who is very obviously about to drown herself and so he saves her and that is Mira and she is a Jewess who has become estranged from her father who she does not have a good relationship with and Daniel uh, after saving her takes her to the home of his friends the Merricks and they take her in um and become, you know, a safe space for her. So all these stories and all these characters intertwine into this absolute masterpiece of a book. I really don't want to say more about the plot because I don't want to spoil anything. This is a book I went into kind of scared because I've absolutely loved everything I've read by George Eliot. And Daniel Deronda is a huge favorite with so many people and a lot of my bookish friends um they're like Daniel Deronda is one of my favorite George Eliot novels I've read it two or three times it's just absolutely wonderful and I have seen the mini series before so I knew the like big plot threads that happen um but it's the little moments that I missed in the mini series that happened in this book that just really raised the bar yeah, I read it with the George Eliot group that I'm in. We decided we're going to read all of George Eliot's novels. And so we decided to read two chapters a day, which was actually fantastic. We took it really slow and I got to really savor the plot and the, the writing and the themes. And we discussed it every day. So I got to see other perspectives and um, maybe things that I didn't think about that someone else noticed. And it was just really good to take her slow because her stories are so good, but they're 
dense and they ask a lot of you as a reader, but it's so, so rewarding. Her payoffs are always top tier. So if you do read this, just take your time with it. It's, it's so worth it to just take your time with it. One thing I liked about this one is it looked at art and music in society and the importance of it to people in general. Um, Mira is a singer and, um, you know, Victorian women at the time, they needed to be able to sing and play the piano and do this and that. I really appreciated how George Eliot incorporated that throughout the story and sometimes in a way that you weren't expecting. I also am just absolutely blown away by how much George Eliot was able to really get in the characters' heads and look at um, their psychology and what drives them. And we really, really got to know them, just how flawed some of the characters are and you still root for them. Gwendolyn is such a frustrating character because when you first meet her, she is so spoiled. But at the same time, I really liked her because she wanted to be independent. And like I said previously, she was like, I'm not going to find any man that I'm going to want to marry. I am fine on my own. And I absolutely loved that, especially in a Victorian novel. And it felt very George Eliot. <laughs> But then she's spoiled and haughty um, and just really frustrating. And then she gets in this marriage with Mr. Grandcourt that is not what she expected it to be like. And um, it really flips a switch in her and makes her really like look inside. And um, she's just so full of despair at the consequences of the choices that she's made. And it really just opens her eyes and gives her like a new worldview. You know, she's still a flawed character. So she still reverts back to her old ways at some points. But then another point, she has really great, great growth, uh, which I think is, you know, 100% accurate to everyone as a human being. We're not all perfect. We all have flaws. We want to grow, but sometimes we take one step forward and two steps back. Um, it's just very, very accurate of human beings. Uh, we also have Daniel, who um, I absolutely adored. I feel like in the Victorian era, to be the ideal Victorian man, you needed to be strong. You didn't need to show emotions. Showing emotions was being weak. Um, you needed to have all the money and the power, you know, the house, the servants, the horses, everything. And Daniel is such a breath of fresh air <laughs> in the toxic masculinity societal norms. Um, he is absolutely kind and he's vulnerable and he's sensitive. Um, he's humble and he's uh, self-sacrificing and the journey he goes on to find himself and what he wants to do with the rest of his life was just so beautiful. And there were scenes where Daniel actually like openly wept, which wasn't a norm at the time. Um, and she just wrote him in such a beautiful way. And just thinking about it, there are certain scenes that I just cried at in the book and it just makes me tear up thinking about. But he just wants to treat everyone with dignity and um, just be a genuinely good human being. So um, it's really interesting too that this explores uh, Judaism in Victorian society. Uh, George Eliot was not a religious person and I think it really speaks to her strength as a writer that she was able to look at religion in Victorian times and handle it with such grace and care. Like in Romola, she did a really good job of coming down on the corrupt side of religion, like the people in power who were abusing it and um, aren't practicing what they're preaching. 
But then in Daniel Deronda, I really appreciated that we're looking at normal people like Mira is Jewish and she just wants to be a good person and live a good life and find her family. And through some of the other characters, they just genuinely embody just wanting to be a good person and practice what they preach and just um, love other human beings and treat others how you want to be treated. Um, and she does such a lovely exploration of Judaism and religion. I was just incredibly impressed by it. And it was really lovely reading it with the people I read it with because I believe all of them are religious and I'm not. So it was really nice having a group that we could discuss things with uh, very openly and genuinely. Um, and everyone was just enjoyed the discussion. And it was really interesting seeing different viewpoints and different perspectives. It was just really interesting because too, at the time being Jewish was very looked down upon, which is so weird nowadays with the um, perspectives we have now. And in the book, uh, you could really tell with characters who um, embraced those norms, just like, oh, you know, if you're Jewish, you're this, and then throw out some kind of like harmful stereotype or, you know, you got to watch out for them because they'll do X, Y, and Z and throw out another harmful stereotype. Whereas Daniel was one of those characters that he just wanted to genuinely get to know the Jewish characters and what they believed and why they believed it and, you know, how they applied that to their lives. And he was just one of those people that just wanted to learn about others in a very non-judgmental way. It was super refreshing. And then just kind of on the theme of religion, uh, Daniel and Gwendolyn have a very interesting relationship. When she first meets him and they have, you know, they start having conversations, she kind of starts viewing him as like her um, spiritual guru or like a life coach type person. She just really like leans on him or starts like, oh, what would Daniel think about this? I need his advice, um, which I think is a really interesting dynamic. I think she just really sees the goodness in Daniel and how kind he is and how much he just genuinely wants to help those around him. And she's just drawn to that. I will also argue that this book has one of the most lovely endings <laughs> ever one line and i won't spoil who it's between or who wrote it but it says i am the better for having known you and my heart just shattered into a zillion pieces when i read that because it was so lovely and just knowing their relationship just made it lovely there's also one of the most romantic lines ever at the end of this book and um Everybody in the chat was just like, oh my gosh, that was so beautiful. It was just so great. Um, so this is definitely a book that um, every time I think about it, I just get happy because it was so lovely. And her writing is just beautiful. I think I had about 115 Kindle highlights with this. <laughs> Um, and honestly, I probably could have highlighted so much more, but there were so many um, lovely descriptions or um, lines that really made me think about things in a different way. Philosophical quotes. And she really, every book that I've read by her, she really likes to like drop literary references or cultural references and they're so much fun to find. <laughs> so I just really enjoy her writing. It's very lovely. Like I said, she can be dense at times. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed all of this novel. I know some people who are currently reading it now find some of the sections a little bit info dumpy, but I just really enjoyed it because I thought that those sections really enhanced the character growth. They weren't just there for filler. I feel like George Eliot's very purposeful in everything she puts in. And even though this book is like 700 pages, 
none of it feels like filler and it all feels so relevant to the plot and the characters. Her character development is amazing. I feel like I really got to know these characters and how they see the world and what they want out of life. Um, I feel like also we all know people that are like these characters. Like we all know a Gwendolyn Harleth, that we all know a Daniel Deronda, and we all know a Mrs. Mayrick who just wants to take you in and love you and give you a good life. Just so lovely. And I've gotten something different out of every one of her books. One thing that I really got out of this one, being someone who's not religious, I really appreciated the look at how religion and the culture in that religion uh, really plays such a role in people's everyday lives and how much of a comfort it can be um, and something that gives them strength when they're struggling, gives them some identity and community and family. Um, and I just think she, it was just really lovely, the whole thing. She did such a good job. I could just honestly just gush about this for hours, but <laughs> I'll stop myself so this review isn't incredibly long. Too long, didn't listen version. Please go read this book. Great writing, great characters, great exploration of Victorian uh, social mores and views on Judaism at the time. Looking at marriage, is marriage a gamble? Um, how it affects you? Um, there's just so many, so many different themes in here. It's just, it's just lovely. So please go read this book if you haven't. Do not let the length intimidate you. Yes, it is work, but it is so, so worth the work that you put into it. The payoff is amazing, amazing. And there has not been a day since I finished this that I have not thought about it. Um, so have you read this book? If so, please let me know down below. Um, if you have read it, um, how does it rank? in all of the George Eliot books that you've read. Um, if you'd like to leave an emoji, let's leave an arrow or archery themed emoji down below. As always, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button if you want to. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.